I'll be showing you the basic process I go through for optimizing third-party apps so they look the way I want them to on an Onyx box. Before getting started, I always make sure I do three things. First, I make sure my global refresh mode is set to normal. If it's set to anything else but normal, it will override app-specific refresh mode settings. Next, I make sure app optimization is added to my navball. This makes it more convenient to adjust settings as you go later. And lastly, I take a look at the app with all optimizations off. Just tap the HD symbol. This is to get a better idea of what it looks like without any setting changes. Now let's turn optimization back on and get started. The first major setting is this one, resolution. This is really just zoom and should be adjusted to how big you want the different elements of the app to be. The bigger the number, the bigger the elements. You can also toggle this bold font setting on and off to make some text easier to read. Like you can see on this screen, the text switches between bold and regular font. Next, the settings under the Bleach tab, which are basically lightness and contrast settings for the interface. For these, I like starting with setting them to zero and working up from there. The first setting is Add Stroke, which can add an outline to text if you find it hard to see, like the white text that says Moonreader over here. The next is Background Color, which lightens elements of the interface. I like seeing the gray tones, but if you want a lighter look, just turn the setting up. Next, we go into the other color settings. The first one, Icon Color, will darken some of the icons on the screen. I'm not sure how it picks, but here, the three dots in the corner and the small cog go from white and gray to black. This next setting is similar, but seems to apply to images, like cover photos of a book. This bumps up how dark these elements are. If I'm viewing something with a lot of illustrations or photos, I personally prefer this set to zero so I can see all the details and shades of gray. But if you think that's too muddy looking and you want it darker, you can bump this setting up. When it comes to refresh modes, you'll see that the book seems to assign speed setting by default. You have to understand that the faster it refreshes, the more you sacrifice on image quality. I like normal mode for things like reading books and comics when I want to get the best image quality I can. When it comes to other types of apps where I care more about smooth scrolling, I prefer switching to A2 or speed mode. This next part is especially important for reading apps. This first setting is how often the screen refreshes for the number of actions you do. It's that black flash that shows up to clear out any ghosting. I find it kind of irritating, so for things like pages of pure text that don't give me too much ghosting, I like setting this to a higher number so I don't see that flash so often. The second thing is the animation filter. This is useful for reading apps that don't give you an option to turn the page flip or sliding animation off. How I understand it is that the filter is the length of time it filters out what happens after you tap so that it skips over the animation, and what you end up seeing is the display just go from page to page. I found I get the most responsive page flips, setting this a lower number than the default, so around 100. You can see on the left that the 100 setting is a little bit faster than the default 200 setting on the right. The last setting for this tab is full refresh when turning pages, and I like to leave this off usually as well. Unless I'm doing something like reading comics, I don't really want that full screen flash so often. When it comes to the options in the last tab, these settings I have found don't actually do much, at least for the apps I use. But I think their names are, thankfully, pretty self-explanatory if you want to play around with those. This is how I do it for reading or browsing apps. I personally don't use third-party note-taking apps like OneNote, but Onyx Books does have suggested settings for those, which I've linked to below. If you want to know more about using a books in general, here's another video you might be interested in on my channel. Thanks for watching.